the number one is one of the things that I appreciate the most is it puts students in charge of their learning. They can go through this at their own pace. They can they can uh, they can make it as rich an experience as they want. Um, they know with clarity what it is that they have to do at any point in time. And I guess the I guess the, the biggest thing for me when I give students handouts to class on paper and they leave the room, I usually go and pick up probably three quarters of them again after they've left. And I thought about one day I stopped and I thought, you know, I would probably do the same thing now. In the world that, that, that I've moved into, um, it's all Blackberry, computer, everything. Kids don't take with them because they know where to find it if they need to. So one of the, I guess the top reason to use is a hybrid in your classroom is they have that there. Support. I'm done. <laughs> okay, and Andy Shell in the back there can, can speak to this one. Courses that that uh, that are created as hybrids can be edited. Um, Les, my brother-in-law, Sir Macheski again is doing a course developed by Jason Benson. Um, there's a lot of personal uh, voice quotes and things like that in there that he wants change or he needs to change. Um, so he's able to do that. So any course can be edited quite simply uh, to suit the... Uh, this is this was always one of my pet peeves, um, especially especially at Bishop Murray. Uh, um, you always had to book one of the two VCRs to show stuff in your class, and it was always booked by Randy Street. <laughs> A lot of the courses will contain either uh, video embedded in them or links to that. So you don't have to ever worry about booking VCRs that kids can look, watch this stuff at home or they can watch at school if you have access to the classroom. One of the words that I came across is cyberarian. Encouraging kids to, to, to manage the information. You saw in the little presentation this morning how much information is constantly being generated um, and, and how kids are being expected to, to plan for jobs that don't even exist yet. What the, what the courses do is they encourage kids to be cyberarians. You heard uh, Clint say that they go out and they seek out all this information all these activities on the internet. That's what these courses are doing. They're encouraging kids to be cyberarians <coughs> and manage information rather than just sit there and consume it. But one of the things that you've heard, uh, you heard echoed already is that students progress at their own rate. In my class, using the hybrid course, I never have kids um, who sit and do something unproductive. <laughs> Because they know they can they can blast through this course in a week if they want, or they can they can follow the outline and they can do it as as they uh, as they should be doing it. But there's never idle time because they always can go ahead and look at everything in the course. What we're going to be doing on June fifteenth is ready to go and ready for them to look at and engage in on September first if they if they so desire. So they can progress through this at their own time. This semester I have uh, three special needs kids in my class. It gives me an opportunity to introduce the lesson for the day. Um, the kids can blast through it at their own pace and then I can go back and help uh, some of the special needs kids go through the material on their own. Um, you have a face-to-face -face class hybrid. You have yes. 35 students mm -hmm. and 15 of them are on June 15th or June 1st or whatever and 20 of them are on January 1st. What's the lesson that you teach? The January 1st lesson? Uh, well, let me, let me show you an example. Same to call myself. You see the talking? The kids over Well, welcome to Unit 2, uh, the production. <laughs> what we did here in Unit 1 through was through get you comfortable with the idea that <laughs> Creating a production involves two parts, really, the planning and, 
everything that we do is kind of like a little video introduction, a little video clip, motivational set to get them engaged in what we're going to be doing for the day. Um, typically, when I come into the classroom, I'll fire up the talking head and I'll take attendance while the kids are listening to that. And uh, they, it, it, was, it was kind of funny. Uh, our, our VP came in the classroom and said, What are you guys doing? And they're looking, and that's, that's Mr. Knack on there. Oh, yeah, he's a talking head. And, <laughs> And they were, they uh, they actually look forward to the talking head every day. Um, but something like this allows you, and not every course, granted, has a little video clip in it like this. But um, but kids can come in and and they, they can log in, they can get started on the content for the day. It might be a video clip, it might be a, a bit of text introducing what they have to do. But I think your question is, how can you have one kid working here and one kid working there? Um, the courses are structured so they, they encourage kids to work independently. Um, and the teacher, you, you may have heard the phrase, the guide on the side, rather than the sage on the stage. The courses are designed to do just that. The teacher's role is to act as a guide to help them manage all that information rather than to dispense it. So for that reason, teachers can, you know, can have kids working at this point. <coughs> Actually, all of the courses, four minutes left. All of the courses are are originally designed to work with students coming in at various points in time, so so they're able to do that. What we're looking at here is a couple of email notifications that that teachers get regularly when students send in. But what and I only put three on here because that's all I can really fit on here to make them legible. But what I want you to notice about these is the times that these are coming in. <laughs> 2 a.m., uh, just about 9 o'clock in the evening. Uh, this one here, once again, just about 2 a.m. What would possibly cause a kid to be working on homework at 2 o'clock in the morning? Or 9 or 10 o'clock? A lot of these kids find this stuff really interesting. They're on the internet. They're 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 they're, they're chatting with friends. They're, they're looking at their Facebook. They're working on their assignments. And they're doing all these things simultaneously. So one of the really neat things to see again is that kids are engaged in this stuff beyond school. Um, and you can track all of this and see when your kids are online, what they're looking at, what they're doing. Uh, in most cases, kids will come home from school and they'll go straight to the computer and you'll see them working on assignments. You'll see them looking at materials, taking quizzes, <clears throat> uh, a lot of those things. So it's it's constantly engaging. Those must be all kids are there in Canelo, because that's easy to find these. <laughs> 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 that's that one kid did a unit four test at two in the morning? Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my best work at two in the morning. Yeah, that's what he's working on. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's working on. He just that. came home yeah. from the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few hockey players on my various courses, and I find that's when a lot of them are going on. It's we, had, we actually had a student in a discussion board area who had written a test and said, I'm not going to do very well at this because I'm really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and it was 3 o'clock in the morning and he was working on it, so we had a discussion with that student. But <laughs> I remember back in, uh, in my beginning days as a teacher, we all had these day books that we carried around with us and every day you'd, you'd go and you'd write in what you did in the class and, and at the beginning of the year you'd sit down and you'd go through the, the new day book and you'd write the date on top and you'd plan out the entire unit from day one to uh, June 30th. Wouldn't it be cool if you could sit down and you could say on July or on June 20, 21st we're going to be at this point in the course and this is what we're going to be doing. Well, cyber school courses all have the calendar built into them that does just that. Teachers who have designed the courses have, have painstakingly gone through the course and measured out where they should be at certain points in time. So students can actually come here, punch in the date that they started, and they can, they can look and see where they should be at in the course. Um, I have students who go to Mexico, go to Disneyland, and they often take laptops with them and they continue with their courses. Uh, from wherever they are. In the hotel room they'll be working on, <coughs> on courses. It's kind of neat to see when their assignments come in, you're notified by email, you know they're in Mexico and they're still working on their assignments. 
because they know where they should be and what they have to do. So the, the responsibility becomes theirs in keeping track of what they should be doing and where they should be. Um, you've probably noticed with Clint and Jeff looking at their courses that all of the courses look very similar. Um, once again, a product or a result of the CIS uh, making all of the courses look homogenous in appearance and in their function. Students um, that I have in my classes, when they come in, uh, I would probably say 80% of them have had some exposure to cyber school at some time, and they quite comfortably navigate through the course because they're familiar with where things are, where, uh, how, to, how to get from one place to another. So everything is there and ready for them. So that structure, once again, product of the CIFs, makes it very easy for students uh, to relate from one course to another. Teachers as well. Um, one of the things that, that my students appreciate right from, from day one is their ability to track things. Uh, if you look at research about evaluation, kids perform their best when they know exactly how they're going to be evaluated, <coughs> what they're going to be doing, um, and how they measure up to what the expectation is. Um, a lot of the tools that you saw in the other courses allow them to do that. So at any time, and in real time, they can go and check what they should have done, uh, where they should be in the course in relationship to the time frame, um, how well they're doing on quizzes and assignments, and it's all there in real time for them to look at. So they can perform it. Um, I just made a, a very quick list of the top ten reasons why I think all teachers in our school division should look in, into using the hybrid course. Some of the things that I'm going to show you, you've already heard um, from Jeff and Clint, but we'll uh, repeat them very quickly just to talk about it. One of the things um, that you notice right away when you look at a lot of the courses, and a lot of the cyber school teachers I don't think are as aware as they should be of all of the other courses that have been developed. <coughs> One of the things that, that you appreciate right off the bat is that cyber school teachers have methodically sought out all of the resources and the, the entire unit for their use and all of the teachers that have access to the hybrids can capitalize on that. Um, everything has been sought out, found applicable. What I used to find is you send kids out on a, on a query, a lot of them will get lost. Probably, probably uh, I can relate to that because I do a lot myself. You, you go and you look for something, hey, that's kind of neat. And they go off in different areas and they get lost very quickly. Um, a lot of the courses have the framework to keep their, their queries, their, their investigations guided. So the course content is structured in that way. And cyber school teachers are working hard to constantly keep all of these resources up to date. Um, I remember back in the days of SAS Learning when they had uh, Blackboard and a lot of their resources, courses made by teachers, and you'd go to use them, and you find a lot of the resources were dead links to nothing, or, or they'd been hijacked by, by another company and, and put something inappropriate there. But rest assured, cyber school teachers working on their courses are constantly keeping it up to date and current. Um, the CIF uh, plan, I guess you'd call it, constant improvement framework that started last year, um, is, is really a good thing because it challenges the cyber school teachers to constantly look at their courses and make them better in some way. Um, and you'll see that in a moment as well. Ask Tony what he thinks of CIFs. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a mandatory professional development that I force on our on our teachers involved in the cyber school. It was well, well received by some. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they're important. <laughs> <laughs> they're <being> a <laughs> uh, 